Right now, we are going to have a session which is all about bridging the gap between AI research to real-time edge. And we can see there's setups happening over here. So I'm going to tell you about our next speaker. And, um, you know, because it's some very exciting things are going to be happening right here on the stage. So Amir Servi is Edge Deep Learning Product Manager at Sony. And we're thrilled to have him here. He's an expert at the forefront of the AI revolution. So he's the Edge Deep Learning Product Manager at Sony boasting over 15 years of experience in the tech sphere. So his journey has been from lead product, I beg your pardon, his journey has seen him lead product and research and development teams crafting cutting edge technology products for developers with a focus on computer vision applications and neural network accelerations. So a lot of the good stuff right there. And look, wow, that was pretty quick. He's just hooked this all up. So as we know, AI is reshaping industries and functionalized functionalities across the board. Yet as the challenge lies in making AI operate efficiently on end user devices within strict power and thermal limits. So this is where Amir's expertise truly shines. He's going to be walking us through Sony's model compression toolkit and revealing the secrets behind quantizing and accelerating deep learning models for efficient edge deployment. So without further ado, let's delve into the latest research in quantization techniques and discover how they've been seamlessly integrated into a practical product. We're also going to gain insight into the vital role of hardware-aware compression for inter uh, inferencing on the edge, and perhaps most excitingly, Amir is going to demonstrate how engineers and researchers like your good selves and joining us virtually can implement these techniques through Sony's MCT. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the stage Amir Servi. Thank you. Thank you. So hi, everyone here and uh, back at home. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's session where we will uh, showcase how we at Sony are uh, combining AI uh, research um, and open source product to enable bridging the gap between AI research uh, and real-time edge AI. Uh, so I am your survey, a deep learning product manager uh, at Sony. Um, Father of two kids, three dogs, and five product, products to this day, uh, which most uh, were made, most products, not kids and dogs, were made for AI developers uh, to actually save time and efforts when they taking a deep learning model uh, from lab to production. Uh, and specifically, I would say that throughout my career, I am kind of in a mission to enable edge AI uh, and deep learning. Uh, which, in other words, called geek. Um, I also love football, so uh, as a Real Madrid fan, I'm happy to be here today. Um, a word about our, uh, our group. Uh, in our group that was acquired by Sony uh, around seven years ago, uh, originally was Altair, semiconductors. Uh, we have a wide experience in uh, signal processing, communication, and specifically, of course, AI. As part of our participation in the Atrios initiative, um, which is an edge AI sensing platform, I won't get into it right now, we are working continuously on, on bleeding edge, bleeding edge uh, technologies uh, to enable AI developers to quickly and efficiently squeeze any computer vision model uh, to some of the most um, power and area efficient uh, chips um, in the market today, such as uh, the Sony uh, IMX500 that you can see uh, actually right there on the top. I won't talk about the chip. I won't talk about Atrius. Uh, today we are going to talk about um, um, the agenda for today. We will uh, we quickly go over the challenges in taking a model from lab uh, to the edge and how we address these issues and challenges uh, at Sony. We will present some of uh, the recent uh, research uh, that came out um, of our group in, in the AI compression field. But more importantly, how we infuse those into uh, real life practical uh, features within our um, model compression toolkit, which stands for MCT. And lastly, we will cover MCT capabilities 
um, and value for you as a developer um, and even see how it looks in real life. Okay, so Edge has its uh, challenges. It has a limited resources, uh, space, computer, uh, computer uh, bandwidth, power, etc. Uh, and various hardware uh, in the, on the Edge field uh, impose restrictions on the uh, deployed model. Uh, specifically, uh, different hardware uh, has or use a very specific numeric formats which make the optimization and quantization a, a, a harder and more complex. Um, although extensive uh, research uh, addresses this problem, but in real life, applying such research uh, on real application is very hard. Which uh, then what happens is that due to the complexity, a lot of uh, practitioners um, too often uh, utilize naive approaches that makes uh, this process even harder and eventually ends up with unsatisfactory performance, whether it's uh, from accuracy point of view or runtime performance, latency, application. Um, and, and this leads to, at the end, long and, and costly uh, cycles of development where you put so much effort and eventually either the performance is not as good or in, in worst cases, you don't even, you're not even able to take the model and deploy it on the edge device. And sometimes even more painful is that in many cases, the accuracy that the, you get at the end of the uh, flow of the optimization on the framework is not even close to the one that you see on the hardware. So it's hard to predict. And in order to overcome those problems, uh, we uh, introduced uh, MCT, uh, Model Compression Toolkit. Uh, uh, this is an open source uh, tool that is integratable into uh, both PyTorch and TensorFlow. It was developed by design as a generic tool to support virtually any uh, task or architecture um, out of the box. Um, not only that, um, one important uh, key aspect is that MCT allows for hardware or aware quantization, uh, which makes the model one fit uh, to the underlying hardware uh, and its requirements and restrictions. Uh, and moreover, it lets you uh, uh, know the, uh, the end uh, uh, accuracy that you will get in the hardware while you're in the framework. We will see how, how it uh, looks. Um, MCT is packed with state-of-the-art quantization algorithms uh, based on both in-house uh, uh, research uh, paper uh, and world-leading uh, papers that were released in recent years. Lastly, um, it was designed to be as simple as possible, easy to start with a bag of tutorials and quick starts. Uh, where you can easily fetch your uh, your own either your own model or any model from uh, leading uh, model zoos um, and uh, have it optimized uh, on the fly with a single line of code or utilize one of our notebooks that will allow you to also go step by step and change it to your own models and data sets. So our approach was a, a, a research inspired tool that is model agnostic and it can eventually help you implement academic research quickly into your development uh, pipelines as it research inspired. Again, it is generic to support every type of task and framework um, out of the box or your own custom, custom model. Um, MCT automates any parameter search, including uh, thresholds, cluster centers, uh, and uh, et cetera, and specifically mixed precision, uh, which means that you don't have to manually select the number of bits per layer. Um, uh, the tool does this automatically for you and finds the best combination for your model within the hardware restrictions. Also, that um, I mentioned that it's hardware aware, so the accuracy that you get um, on 
the framework at the end of this process is the accuracy that you will get on the hardware due to the hardware process. Here are some of the uh, some example of notable um, algorithm publications that were published in recent years uh, that the MCT development team has referred to as part of the tool development. Some are Sony uh, publication, as you can see uh, in the blue, and on the other side uh, are not. Um, I welcome you all to have a deeper dive reading those papers and see how they were implemented in our tool. It's, it's open source, so you can see the code. Um, but I do think that it will be more efficient to go over the tool and, and try it and see how it actually works. What we see right here is a high-level diagram of MCT. Uh, first thing that we can clearly see is that MCT takes a model from the framework and uh, keep it in the framework or on the output. So. You can utilize it with regardless to edge uh, deployment. Uh, and you can also validate the accuracy on the hardware directly on the framework. Um, MCT either gets a representative, representative uh, data set um, as an input, or it generates one based on the model's weight distribution. Um, it yields similar or close enough uh, results. And this is mainly for cases where privacy or confidentiality is a restriction or when data set is not in hand. Uh, by the way, the reason that the representative data set is uh, optional is due to uh, our research, latest research paper that uh, allows for zero shot uh, quantization without uh, any data set. Uh, the TPC target platform uh, configuration allows you to configure the target hardware preferences. Um, things like number of bits used uh, in some operators for uh, weights and activations, using patterns and more. Um, the core supports all the algorithms that was, were presented in the last slide and many others with the help of techniques such as statistics corrections, knowledge distillation, uh, quantization parameters and search and more. Eventually, uh, the type of quantization um, is at the end of the process. Uh, PTQ requires uh, no data or unlabeled data um, and uses a calibration step to compute the quantization params and doesn't optimize uh, the quantis uh, the, any lost function to do this, unlike QAT, which is also available in MCT. Uh, GPTQ is a gradient-based PTQ. It's uh, a knowledge distillation method that MCT implies and it uh, doesn't require any labeled data. And unlike PTQ, it optimizes a distillation a loss to fine tune the quantization uh, parameters uh, to eventually achieve better accuracy than in PTQ. Um, and if to sum up, uh, PTQ is basic, easy, and often, and often uh, is just good enough. GPTQ requires some GPU time uh, and provides great results even for below 8 bit. And in many cases, GPTQ is, I would say, the closest to QET just without the effort. In this slide, we can uh, see PTQ uh, results uh, with mixed precision, results for a yellow, non a vin a yellow vinano uh, using several compression rates. Um, the x-axis shows the different rates and below it, the average weights uh, per uh, uh, weights bit width. So just to clarify, uh, the user uh, indicates the compression rate they want. Um, so, for example, a compression rate of, re of 4 provides an average of 8 bit, uh, and for 6, it's 5.3 bit. Uh, so, you can see that for 8 bit, we got 0 0.7 degradation. Um, you probably know the anomaly here um, where there's a possible noise here, and after that, there's a degradation that this is real life, some stochastic. Um, anyway, uh, after a uh, Interest, interesting thing to see uh, is that when utilizing data-free PTQ on 8-bit provides a, a reasonable uh, results with zero data prov uh, provided. And if you have experience uh, with deployments on fixed point edge devices, I'm sure you can uh, appreciate these results. Let me jump over the YOLO V8 medium. 
we, we don't have time for this. I'm so sorry. Can people um, get a copy of this deck from you? Can they speak to you later over some coffee? Yes. Can they connect with you on LinkedIn? Because there's really interesting stuff here. And you have a QR code. People can try it. People can contribute. Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Just because we're, we're keeping the schedule tight for our folks that are joining us online. No problem. Okay. I'm so sorry about that. But that was fascinating. So, Absolutely brilliant. Deep dive. Yes. What to say? I here? just welcome you all to try the tool. Uh, try the tool. On any of your models, start the library and give us motivation to continue with our research and product development. Um, that's about it. Thank you very much. Fantastic. OK, brilliant. Big round of applause for Amir, please. That was wonderful stuff. I'm so sorry to cut you off. So please, let's leave that slide up just for a moment. Take a photograph. You want to reach out to Amir. Or go and, you know, go and grab him over a coffee, because that's really important. Amir, that was brilliant. I'm, again, sorry to cut you off, but that was fascinating. And